Hello, folks. Uh, this is the City Beef Podcast. I'm one of your hosts tonight, Gary Hill. Uh, with me tonight is none of my usual co-hosts, and that's, that's fine. This is impromptu, and I uh, set this up to say, hey, two of these guys really don't like the exorcist, so let's do, let's do something fun. Mm-hmm. I'll introduce <laughs> one, I'll introduce um, one of those people right now from the They Must Be Destroyed on Site podcast, and... Um, with me on last call torches respectively uh mr lee russell how you doing sir i'm doing good i'm sitting here with a nice can of green soup drinking it through a straw actually not really doing that because that's fucking gross but uh yeah no other than, the, other than that doing very well sir thank you just a breezy sunny afternoon just sucking that soup to a straw man <laughs> uh, <laughs> we'll, talk, we'll talk about that you know mm-hmm. oh yeah yeah <laughs> That's definitely in my notes. <laughs> <laughs> That's on all the notes. <laughs> um, with me as well um, is his broadcasting partner and uh, a fine uh, lady all on her own. Um, <laughs> lady Lee Hardy, how you doing? How you doing? Man? I'm doing fantastic. I didn't realize people knew how much I hated The Exorcist. So, <laughs> well, I, I listened to the show and. <laughs> Uh, I was like, wow, she really dislikes this movie. And that's fine, you know. Yeah, you've you've definitely you've definitely gotten a few uh of my podcasting peers like messaging me like, wow, you guys really shit on the exorcist the other day, didn't you? I was like, yeah, we did. I think the best was just uh Lee laughing at my arm hand reactions when I was talking about it. Because it was a animated. lot more than that. It was a lot more than just what we saw in that gift. Mm-hmm. And with me also from the Cinema Degeneration family of podcasting and Last Call of Torches, respectively, Mr. Cameron Scott, how you doing, sir? Uh, I'm doing pretty good. I am uh, kind of surprised at the selection of movies because uh, I also hate The Exorcist. Oh, shit. Uh, there we go. I, I, right on. Yeah, I'm with, you, I'm with you on that all the way. <laughs> so these movies were very interesting for me to watch. And my wife thought it was very interesting that I, the, the subject that we chose given just knows that I think that both Rosemary's Baby and The Exorcist, two of the most overrated horror movies ever. <laughs> Shots fired. <laughs> well, you, you have to watch Rosemary's Baby now. Tell us what you think, Lee, because I'm, I'm curious now because... Oh, just, just, two, just two things she really loves, you know, other people deciding what she can do with her body and what, she, what to do with her child and also gaslighting the fuck out of them. Like that, that, yes. that, those are, those are two things she's really a big fan of. Winner right there. Mm-hmm. I, I love Ruth Gordon. If that means anything to you guys, you know, <laughs> just, uh... Uh, everybody loves Ruth Gordon. <laughs> yeah. But, um, we'll start the show the same. We always start the show and I'll ask, uh, Lady Lee, yes. what you've been watching lately? Uh, what have I been watching lately? Um, I watched these movies and I have watched, uh well we watched turbo kid for the podcast and i honestly think that's like the last movie i've watched because i've been busy with like school and work so haven't been able to explore as many movies as i'd like to fair enough uh lee um actually i'll just do a really quick check of my letterbox here i i will mention one that uh, i was talking to cameron about uh offline um I watched a movie called War Hunt from this year. It's it's the uh, new sort of like low budget soldiers fighting supernatural shit in World War II kind of genre of, of movies. Um, so it's kind of like uh, Overlord, but without the better budget. Uh, it's got Mickey Rourke in it, who is looking a lot like Cameron Mitchell these days. <laughs> and not only in appearance, but just how he does his roles now where he sits at a desk and talks that that's <laughs> that's kind of what he does now and i'm like y- you know what i'm here for it i'm fucking here for it because even though he's not really doing much in this movie he's still like delivering these great lines and he's got an eye patch and so i'm like i'm cool with it it's it's okay and the movie's halfway decent like it's i was pleasantly surprised with how good it actually was um so, uh, yeah, it's actually, you know, if, if you're just sort of scanning your, like, streaming services or whatever, and you see, oh, another little shitty nothing of a film, it's actually one of those good ones where it's just like, you know, you want something on a Sunday afternoon or something like that, or after work or whatever the fuck, and 
have a few beers and it's actually pretty competent because it's it's just this idea of like a special unit of soldiers go into Europe during World War II and they encounter some supernatural shit. They got to fight. And it's pretty good for that genre as far as those things go. So, yeah, I, I guess that's probably all I'll mention. Uh, a, lot, a lot of the other stuff that I've been watching is only has just been like exclusively like rewatches of older stuff that uh, Lee and I's uh, little circle of friends kind of watch on movie nights and stuff like that. Like, I will say we do we do have upcoming we're doing Demolition Man for the last night at Torchy's Patreon. I'd forgotten that's what we're doing for the Patreon and it just so happened we watched it on a movie night the other day. So it's like, oh shit, that's right. Okay. I don't have to watch this again. And <laughs> homework's done. Yeah, homework's done. Uh but yeah, we we've been watching a lot of shit. Like we watched Commando the other night. We watched nice. um we watched all the Mad Maxes. Uh we watched fucking um uh fucking uh the street fighter the first two street fighter films uh and that's the sunny chiba street fighter of course not the rob uh the uh john claude van damme one um but yeah just just, just kind of doing that you know uh the our, our circle of friends are not the movie nerds that lee and i are so their their tastes uh sort of gravitate more towards mainstream titles that everyone's heard of and we've just been watching a lot of that shit lately so yeah I'm kind of disappointed Lee, that Lee Lee did not watch the Raul Julia Street Fighter performance because it's it's kind of wonderful in, in that sense. And I think know, it's but... I think it's on our list though. I think it's on like like our friend uh, Carrie has like a master list of, of fucking shit that he's been building to to watch for these movie nights, and I think that might be on it. So yeah. That, that, if I ever make it, <laughs> one of my favorite line deliveries ever. You know, because the day Bison invaded your village. It was the worst day of your life. To me, it was Tuesday. You know, <laughs> <laughs> so good. <laughs> oh my gosh, Cameron, what about you, my friend? Oh, I've been watching a lot of B movie shit. A lot of B movie shit. I watched uh, Ninjas versus Monsters and Ninjas versus Zombies. <laughs> <laughs> Why I did that, don't ask me. Uh, I don't know. I did it for fun. Yeah, I'm gonna wait. Is, is that? Is that uh, is that the like part of a series? Is that is that like the the ninja? I, I think there was the one a few years ago, ninjas versus alien or whatever the fuck it was. There's one ninjas versus aliens, uh, ninjas versus zombies, I think, and then ninjas versus monsters, which is the last one. Mm, cause I, I might just... I might have those out of order, but I'm pretty sure monsters is the last one. Okay, because I distinctly remember seeing stuff for ninja uh, ninja versus aliens because it like featured this incredibly sexy asian chick and skin tight like leather like doing like splits and kicks and yeah there's a lot of that yeah, yeah there's a lot of that in these <laughs> all right yeah that's the one i watched that i watched uh, some old stuff like uh, neon city and robocop watching some post-apocalyptic stuff for a podcast that i'm doing and uh just admittedly just catching up on uh peacemaker and boba oh yeah been watching yeah. kind of let a couple of those episodes build up I, I, i'm not completely sold with boba fett yet it's, it's it's a it's a weird series there's not a lot of boba fett in that boba fett series I gotta, I gotta yeah it's, <laughs> it's it's oddly paced i'll tell you that much i like i like <sighs> You know, elements of without making it a big discussion of, about it. Well, you know, you, but... you, know, you know what it is. It, it it's see, like J- John Favreau and Dave Filoni who are doing the series. They're basically doing what George Lucas would have done if he had gotten the chance to make his Star Wars like Underworld series that he had wanted to do for the longest time back in the day like the whole like i just want to do the scummy criminal element series of star wars and put it on cable television or whatever the fuck like on nbc or some bullshit but they're getting to do it and they don't have to worry about you know well they're they're on disney but they they can still go a bit harder than what you would do on like nbc or something like that and they're, they're, i'm kind of okay with that like i'm kind of okay because yeah. every time they kind of show boba fett it's like here's Boba Fett without his helmet on. And he's just this old dude who's like recovering from wounds and getting his ass kicked every episode. It's like, okay. And the best episode is the one where Mando shows up. Like, "Mm, yeah, where it's basically just a Mandalorian uh, season (laughs) 2.5. It's it's, it's kind of what it is. Yeah, I agree. I agree. 
Oh, uh, but yeah, but pretty much been watching those, watching these movies. I watched uh, Demolition Man as well because I knew mm. we were going to be doing that for uh, with the pair up with uh, uh, Forty Eight Hours or Last Call yep. of Turkeys. Mm-hmm. So I knew knew we had those on plate. So I did those and watched the Ray Donovan movie. See, I got to finish Ray Donovan first for to watch Ray Donovan movie, and um, this this is one of those things I, I enjoy it probably more than The Sopranos. Um, that's hard to say because it's. I, I like I like Ray Donovan more than The Sopranos. I, mm-hmm. I can safely say that. Yeah, and I like both. I like both. It was also good to see Amy Sedaris again in that universe, and that's probably the best part of the episode for me is the Amy Sedaris stuff. <laughs> Mm-hmm. I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of her though since strangers with the candy and all that stuff and it, um it's always good to see her i dig <laughs> yeah i dig all the weird side characters because you know boba fett and, and mandalorian they're both kind of ciphers like they don't have much going as far as personality so like those shows are kind of built on the side characters like reacting to them and stuff so it's like yeah give me more amy sadaris like just fucking around with her droids in this fucking garage and shit. Like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm for it. It's cool. <laughs> to, to, to be fair, I think Boba Fett had a whole seven minutes of screen time in the whole Star Wars universe, the original mm-hmm. Star Wars universe, so... Yeah, it's like, you know, he, his his mystique has built up over the decades, and now that they're finally giving people Boba Fett, everyone's complaining. I'm like, you know, you can go fuck yourself if you're complaining about this shit, honestly. <laughs> Wasn't what they yeah. imagined. Mm. Yeah, Bob, yeah, Boba Fett totally didn't fuck a couple chicks in the first episode. <laughs> Let, let's see what's under that best car cod piece, man. We all want to see Boba Fett dong, man. Mm-hmm. It's all we want to see, you know. I want to yeah. see him shoot Han Solo in the face. With his semen, perhaps. Boba Fett shot first. <laughs> <laughs> they drew for Bud. <laughs> 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 I don't have a whole lot to mention. I, I watched a film for, for Bo's show, um, fucking Alec McPherson, you know, requesting stuff called White God. Um, mm. I don't want to talk a whole lot about it, but it's not <laughs> what, it's not the way it sounds, people. It's, 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 about, it's about a girl whose father kicks her dog to the curb in the street and the unfortunate adventures of this dog. And it's a film that'll bring you up it's a film that'll make you upset and sad and angry and man it, it, it's a lot of it's a lot of feelings in this film it's a hungarian film and if you're a dog lover no dogs are harmed in this film by the way but it it it, it, it depicts it it depicts it in that way that a dog was harmed in this film i don't want to give it away but if you're a dog lover it may upset you to, to watch the film and it, it uh he comes out um in the end Damage, but maybe okay. I don't want to. I, it's up to your own interpretation, people. Let's put it that I, way. I heard that movie is quite the trip. Like I fucking, it, I've seen pictures of like this big army of fucking dogs, and I'm like, that looks pretty intriguing. So yeah, what's it called again? It's called White God. From it's a Hungarian film from 2015, I think. 14. Sounds right. Um, my dog's just uh, sleeping in the background. Uh, mm. She's somewhere there, Sasha. My, 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 my chats are <laughs> elsewhere, you know. <laughs> so it's better off that way, you know, uh, sometimes. Well, well, Sasha's well. still looking like, what, bitch? What, what, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> me, you know what? <laughs> and my cat's uh, staring at me in the bedroom. <laughs> I'm all caught up with Peacemaker. Mm-hmm. It took, it, uh, I waited for that fourth episode for me to say, am I going to like John Cena in this finally? And I think the fourth one was... um was directed by Jody Hill who does all the righteous gemstones and and um Eastbound and oh, Down. Good show. Good show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Better shows than Peacemaker in my opinion, but it, it, it made me like John Cena as that character. Um working with these people in the fourth episode and the fifth episode is even better. So I am gonna keep on watching. I would say that if I don't like something so much, I'm gonna give it the four episode swing and uh have me on the fourth episode. So yeah, I, I liked it a lot. Hanoi rocks. That's all I'm gonna say. Just, yeah, you know, yeah, that was nice. It's a good. It's I haven't a good. Seen it yet. It's a good. It's a. So I'm not spoiling anything, but it's a good. Uh, it's a good uh, show. It's it's kind of like a lighter show, and even though there's like a lot of action in it, it it like it's a little lighter on the like the seriousness of it all, and it's just like a good characters bonding uh, episode or whatever the fuck. It, it's it's pretty good. I liked it. 
It's it's more than the opening, um, you know, credits every time. Mm. People love it, and I know why they love it. It's just it's more than that, though. <laughs> it's it's the one show where I don't fast forward past the beginning credit credit because, sequence because, mm-hmm. because you just you just don't. You got to watch them dance you and stuff, you know. You can't if you if you do, then you're not really a fan of the show, in my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> if you do that, you're just a fucking animal. <laughs> as, far as, movies, as far as movies go, I haven't watched a whole lot. And, uh, since the last time I recorded, so I'm, I'm gonna leave that one alone, and uh, we're gonna go into our features then, which I'm, I'm excited to talk about because these are two very uh, wild films, and I'm curious my co-host's opinions on them. And I, I, I've never seen one of these all the way through, and I haven't seen the other one before. So just, just uh, in the ears of Jeffrey X. Martin, one of these films. Um, we're doing two films from 1974 that are considered Exorcist ripoffs. One of which, to the point of it's been banished from existence, which I think is bullshit. Mm. Um, but uh, Abby and Beyond the Door we're doing together, and I'm um, looking forward to that. And since they're both from '74, I'm gonna let the lady decide. Uh, what do we do first, there, Lady Lee? Uh, I think we should do. Oh, which one do we have more to vent about? <laughs> Let's do Abby first. Let me go with Abby first. Okay. Good. I know I saw some, some at least a radio spot for this, so you'll hear that or something like it right after this. This was Abby. This was Abby. <laughs> a woman loved and in love until that night when something evil came looking for a soul to possess. I can't stop thinking about your husband. <laughs> that creep. Forget him. Was this Abby? Now the fun starts. Grab her. Hold her. Hear me, demon. Leave this woman's body. Abby. Rated R. from 1974 uh your cheapo plot synopsis is a marriage counselor becomes possessed by the demon of sexuality when her father-in-law an exorcist freed it while in africa uh the stars the the late and um very genre heavy carol speed she's been in a lot of great stuff including a big 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 birdcage or big dollhouse i forget which one she's in birdcage i think it is Birdcage, and she's in the Mac, and she's in, yep. she's in a lot of good stuff. Um, William Marshall, Blackula himself, mm-hmm. uh, and 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 the King of Cartoons, respectively. As, uh, yeah, Bishop Garrett Williams, who's um the one who frees um Ishu, the the the, the sex demon from Africa. Yeah, uh, <laughs> T- Terry uh, Terry Carter as Reverend Emmett Williams, who's his son and Abby's husband. Uh, another <laughs> gen- another genre. Uh, um, awesome person, Austin Stoker, um, plays her friend, Detective Cass Porter. Juanita Moore plays uh, Abby's mama. Um, yeah, let's let's get into this. Uh, this is a, it's important to say this is directed by William Girdler and then story by William Girdler. And if you don't know who that is, this is the guy who gave us the Manitou mm-hmm. and uh, directed Sheba Baby. Day of the Animals, um, Grizzly, just to name a couple, man. And I, yeah. I um, these are all great films you, you should watch. Um, uh, if yeah. you guys haven't seen them, yeah. If, if like Manitou was his last one, if people don't know, and like he unfortunately, like a lot of people in this decade died in a helicopter crash, uh, yeah. which is like that sucks. Like fuck, because uh, like Girdler made a lot of like these B movies that are kind of like. All right, some of them are really bad, and some of them are really good, and they're always entertaining at the very least. And it feels like he was right on the verge of like maybe getting to do some big budget films. I, I kind of feel like so. Ooh, I, I'm gonna kick it to probably. She says she has lots of lots of notes on this and <laughs> lots of grievances. <laughs> No, so, it's not. It's not as bad as the other one. No, just, no, just no, 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 no. This, this, this is fine. This is this is all about, babe. Uh, Lady Lee, what do you think yes. of 1974's Abby? 
okay i actually did like it i am not gonna criticize it too highly um there were some moments where it kind of made me laugh but the thing is uh the one thing i noticed about this music or the movie that the music actually matched the movie um <laughs> that's <laughs> foreshadowing something <laughs> and i think it was kind of nice uh how they introduced the characters so they made abby seem like the sweet innocent uh good catholic person so when the transition happened it was very shocking and uh you could actually kind of see it more and it was that idea of like when she cut herself uh, the doctor was suggesting that it was possibly depression and that there was a whole drug thing. And I could actually kind of believe that story, unlike The Exorcist, where the face completely changed. And they're like, oh, it's psychosis. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> so I really appreciate how this one, um, they had very little changes. Like, I know her voice changed, but I was able to kind of suspend disbelief and them not thinking that she was possessed. I mean, there's, right there's, uh, sorry to interrupt, but there, I mean, there's documented cases of like so-called exorcisms where they record and they have someone doing like the person who's supposedly possessed doing a voice that's like that. Yeah. And it's, it, it's not out of, you know, it's not out of uh, questionable reality that a person can like do make their voice sound that way. So, yeah. yeah, it was just very extreme, like a very feminine woman sounding very masculine is just a little bit more extreme, mm -hmm. uh, but it's still kind of believable in the sense that it could be something mental like it could just be like something messing you up uh the changes that you saw were like the color of her eyes and that kind of stuff and it's only when you got in close but in general she was just this normal person who acted really sweet and then uh any of the supernatural stuff that happened um was like with her alone so it was kind of that moment of um again no one was there to witness it and then the door shutting and that like thinking it was the wind like it was all those small things that i was actually able to enjoy it wasn't forced on me that i had to believe it um so yeah i did think that was good i appreciate um kind of that build up with the whole family like how it hurt the family so bad but like because they were so tight-knit and uh <laughs> i'm i'm a little over the place hold on a second let me get caught caught up um yeah yeah so yeah i did think um when she murdered the lady that came in like the lady that came into the house when she mm -hmm. murdered her and it was all supernatural things that did it again when people saw it it just looked like abby went crazy like it was abby like either in shock of seeing this woman die or whatever the case may be all the supernatural stuff that happened the person died so they couldn't say anything and I think that's why I enjoyed this. It was very, it wasn't in your face with the supernatural. They limited it with the, how many times you saw it with like general public around. By the time we saw her actually do everything, it's when they were doing the exorcism. Like when, just before they did the exorcism. Right. Yeah. So I did enjoy this. I did laugh when they said that the whole, go get a psychiatrist. Oh, hold on a second. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, a psychiatrist? <laughs> no. <laughs> like i don't know i just that always makes me laugh like there's such a, a stigma against mental health like especially back then um the obviously the quality of the movie wasn't that great so it took away from some of the actual uh scenes in the movie but other than that like i thought um the effects that they had to work with i thought they were good i thought um abby was fucking amazing as the extras like that's right the exorcist <laughs> the, the possessed the possessed uh person i thought she was awesome the faces that she made her actions her body movement like she did a really good job um yeah yeah i think that's all that i really have to say uh oh yeah again i thought it was funny when they brought everyone to the bar because like the whole thing about drinking and you know, being against god never go to bars you can never drink like that's the devil's work so that kind of was made me laugh a little bit that they had the whole exorcism in the bar and that she was attracted to the bar and all that stuff so yeah Abby just wanted to have a good time, yo. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Then I wrote, <laughs> I wrote like, um, BDSM at its finest. Like when she was. In oh, the yeah. <laughs> yeah, she fucks that dude to death. Like... Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that's anything that really, like, in generically, generically, uh, in general, that I want to say about the movie. Cool. Cameron? Yeah. Um, my, my first question was this, this this is American International Pictures. Like, they did this. I'm like, I was mm -hmm. shocked this time around looking at uh, looking at that. I was, I, I had no idea. I had never remembered it. I had only seen the movie once, so it wasn't in my, you know, in my memory banks. But that shocked the shit out of me. Uh, but seeing 
essentially William Marshall, who's, who's uh, you know, Blackula, just in it as the bishop was just, I can't, I can't figure out if he's underutilized or overutilized. Because he's in a different type of movie. We had this talk off off uh, yeah. the air. You know, he, he's in a different kind of movie when he's in this, as is Austin Stoker. Austin mm-hmm. Stoker's in a different kind of movie, but uh, I love Carol Speed in it. She's great. I also mm-hmm. love her in uh, Disco Godfather. I heard an interesting story about her uh, when working with Rudy Ray Moore on a film. Uh, she was quite the dancer, apparently, and liked to dance all night long. And Rudy had a kind of interesting story about that, uh, which I can remember very little of, but don't want to get into. But yeah, uh, awesome, awesome. Oh, I, it, it, it's not a good movie, but it's a good fun movie to uh, <laughs> make fun of. <laughs> I guess if you want to uh, think about it in a good kind of riff tracks, Mystery Science Theater 3000 kind of way. It's it's overall, the, it's it's fun, but it's marred by some really bad, bad acting. Is this when you got people overacting in it, like Carol Speed kind of does going over the top with it. And then you got William Marshall on the other hand, think he's doing Shakespeare. Mm-hmm. He's, you know, they're just in different kind of movies, but it's, it's a good, it's an overall decent, good driving kind of fair. It's a, it's a shame that it never got an official release of any kind. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a shame. It's got one hell of a wild ending. Bad ending. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, it's the, the ex- nicest exorcism ending. I think I've ever seen. Yeah. <laughs> it's the most pleasant ending. <laughs> And we get to see that nice, long tracking shot of the airplane go on forever and ever. And 14 minutes later, and the shot's still going on. I'm I'm exaggerating, but I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> I, find a lot like... of, I find a lot of movies that I have seen um, in this kind of era, they always have these scenes that just go on way too long. Like, <laughs> just unnecessarily right. long. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, there's a lot of that in here. <laughs> yeah, I do agree with that. Like the ending itself, I do enjoy like the back and forth of the devil or the devil, the demon. So like when they're <laughs> they're kind of battling it out, they're like, oh, I'm going to speak this language. I'm going to speak this language. Oh, you have no power over me. I just thought it was cool. I also thought it was cool that finally an exorcist was actually calm and collect and not like panicky and freaking out because, you know, he knows exactly what's going to happen. But anyway, yeah. Um, but yeah, that I found kind of got drawn out too like that ending it was just it was funny at first and then it just got long and then at the end it kind of got a little bit more funny again yeah great great uh lee i think this works really well as a comedy and not a horror movie um mm-hmm. it's it's only a black exploitation movie in the sense that it was made in the 70s and most of the cast is black otherwise it's like it doesn't really uh focus on like the underworld or the cd elements of black society at all like like Lee is saying um, it's really nice to see like a strong, supportive, happy black family in one of these movies that are like, you know, they have no real problems. The, the problem comes when the bishop fucks around in Africa and releases a demon. Like it's right. <laughs> uh, like other, otherwise, like they're they're doing good. They're they're fucking doing good. Everybody's happy. Everyone's doing good. I mean, maybe Abby's not having like steaming fucking shower orgasms every day if the demon didn't show up but uh, you know otherwise it's it's fine um yeah the, the i i know i'm pretty sure william girdler wanted this to be a horror movie but it's just not like he he shoots he shoots it so straightforward and the material is so cheesy that you can't help but laugh at it um and it also I, I would I would push back against Lee a little bit. I'd say s- suffers from some of the same problems as the exorcist and that nobody seems properly freaked out about this pea soup vomit or the obvious right. voice changes and stuff. I, I feel like maybe they kind of like, well, maybe there's something going on here. Um, I, I just think it was a little less like it could have just been a grief response too. like mm-hmm. that's that's a thing. I guess. Like the other one, the, the, okay, the exorcist, the girl's face completely changes. Her voice yeah, entirely yeah. changes. Her teeth entirely change. This, it was very minor. And because, like, the whole cutting and all that stuff, it just kind of gave you. Again, mm-hmm. it, I was, like I said, it was easier to suspend disbelief for this movie than it was the exorcist. And I, I think it's interesting that, so William Marshall's character is, you know, a Catholic, and his Catholicism doesn't really work on this demon you know it's this african demon and like they go into this whole religion thing with it where it's just like there's and the african religion that this actually comes from is incredibly complicated like there's all these tiers of gods and demons and shit 
and like issues just like one of these things and then there's like this bigger fucking all encompassing god that's hit, head of all of it that uh william marshall kind of like implies is also just like another avatar for the christian god or something along those lines i guess that's kind of what they're trying to do here i don't know if, 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 if it's quite if it's quite well spelt out like there's even question of whether this is actually issue by the uh end of it like it, it seems like they're co- sort of taking that into question like are you actually this trickster god or are you just like some minor demon fucking around in abby's body you know having a yeah. having a little bit of a stroll right um but i i did really like that you know it, it's definitely the black exorcist in the sense that we're gonna have to use like our traditional african roots and our african rights to get rid of the demon instead of this fucking catholic bullshit that don't work and i really <laughs> i really like that like there's something deeper going on in there it's just this movie isn't written well enough to really suss it out yeah but it, but it opens up it opens up some interesting ideas and and for that like in that alone i i kind of really love it even though it is a on all other sort of accounts it's it's uh the acting is very spotty at times uh it's very jumpy poorly edited um it looks like shit but that's not the movie's fault that's warner brothers fault um because there's because they destroyed tons of prints there's probably there's maybe never going to be a good print of this i don't know uh because there's no official release of it um it never got released on physical media at all did it it did no it did get released on physical media but it's but there were always like like i was saying saying to you cameron uh offline fly by night like illegal releases so like someone Ah. would get someone would get like a shitty 16 millimeter print that ran through the theaters and got all scratched up and shit and then they'd put it on vhs and uh, and they they'd sell it for a while until someone came down on them and stopped them or whatever right that that kind of thing so like there's never been like there's never been like a uh code red fucking dvd release of this or whatever the fuck right you know kind of thing so, hey, we'll, right, we'll, right. we'll say we'll say a print doesn't exist and somebody finds one in a dumpster in philadelphia somewhere and you know <laughs> yeah yeah Severin puts it out and then it's immediately shot down like the Cruel Jaws situation, which this I will say this is better than Cruel Jaws. I'll say oh, that yeah. all day long. Oh, yeah. Definitely. And also one one more thing I'll say, I just I do like the um I do like the uh the, the sort of black slant on how the demon talks and stuff like that and how there's a bit of like a female empowerment message in this where you know she's she's becoming the sexual aggressor and she's, you know, she's saying stuff like, I ain't your hoe, and, and telling all the dudes they're motherfuckers who got small dicks, and so they're not <laughs> worth her time, you know, kind of thing. Like, I, I, that's, that stuff is generally fucking funny, and, <laughs> and, and, and it's fuck. and Carol Speed, like, goes with it. Like, I, I think she knows what movie she's in, and, and she's just playing it right up, and... You know, there's some people who know what movie they're in, and then there's William Marshall who's in a different movie. <laughs> and you and you I'm can't not sure I know what movie he he thought he was making. <laughs> I think it he was, was doing, funny. I, appreciate I think he was it doing because I thought it was funny. Yeah, I mean, w- William Marshall was going to bring William Marshall to every fucking movie. That that's all he was going to do. But uh, and everybody else, you know, hit or miss. There, there's some really great performances. There's some really incredibly big bad performances, and you just got to live with it. I do, however, appreciate that they recognized the the demon inside her a lot quicker than any other movie I've seen. Oh yeah, <laughs> you know, like there there is some sort of commentary on like how modern Christianity, you know, perverted traditional African religions when they were brought over here as slaves and shit like that, and like there is some sort of conversation. That, like this is a movie that should be remade because I feel like. I think it's Some, good ideas. Yeah, I, I I feel like somebody could really like make the serious Blackxorcist, basically. D- don't call it Blackxorcist because no one will take it seriously. <laughs> but you know, and and I and I uh, yeah, it just it just feels like there there is a lot of material to dig into here. Like they they kind of do it in um, Ganja and Hess a little bit, although that's in the that's in the sense of a vampire movie instead of a possession movie um so you know if if someone could take like the ganja and hess approach to this and and make it serious and make it like ask some deep questions and remake it uh i'd be all for it 
I agree. I think one of the biggest flaws of this movie, and I know it's very silly in parts, is uh, how the demon sex African sex god Ishu blew on the wind from Africa to wherever the hell they're living. I think a major city because they go into the city to go to the to the bar and stuff like the, the bars and stuff, and that's be like a New York or like a Philadelphia or something like that, and and happened to uh, come upon um Abby who is the, the of course the wife of of his son it just um that seems to be the, out of everything that's in this movie that's the biggest far fetched thing to me it's like it, it, this uh, this de- this demon came on the wind and you know flew into the this uh very very chaste uh, or, no 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 i would say chaste independent re- religious type woman who She's a modern Christian, though, right? She's she's yeah. she's cool. She's cool for fucking her husband. Like, w- the 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 print was so rough. That first scene where the demon comes and like pulls the covers off the bed, and she rolls over, and the husband, you know, kind of like wakes up, and he's like trying to wake her up. I couldn't tell if that was her left titty out or if that was her elbow, and I thought he was like grabbing her titty and like trying to wake and her up, like, it, trying to wake her up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I thought the same thing. It was. I had to look real close. It was her elbow, but I, I thought it was a titty too at first. I was like, wait a minute here, who, <laughs> like, who wakes whoa. up somebody like that? You know? <laughs> hey, that's gonna grab your boob. Yeah, that's so personal. Like, yeah. You know. That's how I'm woken up every morning. Just, just jiggle my boob. The, the, don't jiggle the boob. Just flick a nipple and let me know you're there. Okay, you know. The, the... <laughs> That'll wake you up. <laughs> um, I, I, I like William Marshall. Like, like I say, he don't know what movies, and when we get to the end, yeah, you know, he goes from like being like this serious guy with this massive, you know, cross hanging from his neck that it was a gift to him at the beginning of the movie. I guess it's like a good luck gift to go to Africa with, mm-hmm. and. But he basically goes to like this serious, you know, we got to help Abby. I got to trap Ishu back and it's, it's, you know, wooden stump with, with the dick carving on it, you know, (laughs) which I I hope somebody has that prop somewhere because that is an amazing prop. This, this wooden stump case with the, the African, you know, deities dick just carved into it, you know. I think it was the log that the log lady in Twin Peaks had later on, probably. (laughs) Notice the erect penis. Yes, I yeah. noticed the erect penis. Yes, I wish it was a better Thank print. Thank you for I pointing did. that out. I can notice it more. The erect penis uh, on, on the William place. Marshall oh. laughs at the penis, though. He's like, "That ain't a dick." <laughs> <laughs> I'll show you a dick. This is they call me the king of cartoons. God damn it, you know. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I like the ending because he, the whole, it, like, like it doesn't take it too seriously. The extra, he, he knows that he has to get the demon, the demon out of out of Abby. Which, in a way, it's more like it, it freed her to, not to be the one that she wants to be, but to be what's not to be expected of Abby. Because yeah. she, she she's a very free woman at that point, and she wants to go out and have a good time and make guys fuck guys and, you know, smoke them to death. I, I guess they turn to dust or something. I don't know how that yeah. works. The car, the car is shaking like when you're playing Grand Theft Auto and... All of a sudden, smoke starts to come out of there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, she at one point she fucks a dude who looks like Johnny Doctor Johnny Fever from WKRP. I was, I was gonna say Wes Craven. He looks like Wes Craven. <laughs> Wes Craven too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and then, like by the end of it, before she gets stopped and they get into the exorcism, she's going for a three way with two dudes. Oh yeah, and... yeah. That's my kind of girl. <laughs> <laughs> she, she's I love there. the outfits. But yeah, yeah. No, everybody at that fucking bar, man. That is the coolest looking bar I've seen in a black exploitation film. Everybody in there looks like they're fucking chill as fuck. And I was like, I need to hang out in that place. That I looks love like the, cool. the vest with the fringe. And that's mm-hmm. all he wore. Like, that's amazing. <laughs> it's like he's trying to show his man pecs, but like put some side boob in there or something. I don't know. <laughs> I enjoyed every minute of it. That made my lady parts tingle. Like, that's, that's good. That's good. I'm glad. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh it bears repeating you know that there's no drug dealer cousin or nephew in this movie in the family yeah. yeah they're all they're all very strong characters and you don't get a lot of that in movies like this that especially made in, in 1974 i mean even like coffee had the, the degenerate brother you know that was mm-hmm. into some shit it's a great film but they all had that character in there and there's not really one to be had in here you just you know, when Abby goes out to go go out on the town, these are more like 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 black hippies in a way. They're more like free spirits. 
you know, they're not really they're not really bothering anybody. They're they're listening to some records at a bar, having some drinks, having a good time. There's not mm-hmm. really there's not um like that uncomfortable scene of weird science where um... oh god no <laughs> no I'm, I'm not woke people but you know um anthony michael hall talking and the the black voice is still problematic to me i don't know why it is it's pretty bad like it, it's it is hard to kind of watch these days it's like god damn, it was bad sh- then this is twice as bad now yeah it's just like you need to shut up you need to shut up <laughs> anthony michael hall. stop stop speaking jive Get out of, I don't care if the black guys are laughing. It, it doesn't make it better. It, it really doesn't. But you have none of that in this movie, and I, I think it's really strong for that reason. Uh, Carol Speed he, is a, your titular Abby. Puts it a performance as, as as Abby is a strong, you know, female character. You know, fancy that. You know, in 1974, and, and to the 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 demon, the, the 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 free spirit she becomes. You know, who makes white ladies have heart attacks, and you know, just. <laughs> She just just wants that D in the worst way. She's gonna go find it and you know possibly murder can, you. Murder you, <laughs> yes, condemn you to hell and turn you to mm-hmm. smoke pot possibly. And I, I I love this movie. I want to know how that works. I wanted to, I wanted to know more on how that worked. Just I mean, fucking without lubrication. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> oh, I mean, I mean, isn't isn't that the same process that happens in Nightmare Sisters? Basically, yeah, yeah. She she turns them to dust. She she's that kind of succubi, you know, but. There's no bathtub scene in this movie, unfortunately, and mm, yeah, there's no, you know. Damn it! <laughs> hey, have, you, have you seen Nightmare Sisters, uh, Lady Lee? No, I haven't. I have no. to show it to you. It's delightful. <laughs> uh, like we did do, we did do uh, sorority babes, and there wasn't uh. enough. There wasn't enough titties in it for her, so I'm like, okay, we're gonna have to watch Nightmare Sisters at some point. That'll that'll solve the problem right there. You can't put I, I sorority that. babes in the title of a movie and have like not that many women in the movie. Another film that's problematic, uh, Nightmare Sisters, but I still really love it. So, you know, mm. it's there. Yeah. But I, I really love um, Cheryl Speed as Abby in, in, in both in both ways. And you, uh, William Marshall, you just, just acted his ass off in some other movie, but he, he's still great. Everybody's, <laughs> everybody's great in this movie. And I, I wish a better print existed. I, I really do. And yeah. as, as many films that came out that were ripoffs of something else, this film, I think, because it was so small, uh, didn't have the funds to fight back. And it's really a fucking shame that mm-hmm. they, they went for this small movie that's sort of like their movie, but not really, you know? Yeah. I, right. I saw I saw people saying, like, it made, like, in the first few weeks, it was in the in the box office, it made, like, about $4 million or something before Warner mm-hmm. Brothers, like, came at, came down on it, and the budget was only, like, 100000 or something like that. Yeah, like a hundred, two hundred thousand, I think it was. Yeah, Something so really... it's like, like it was on track to be like probably one of the most successful black exploitation films ever made, until Warner Brothers just crushed it, like because, <laughs> because some judge like sided. Oh yeah, it's too much like The Exorcist, so we gotta, you know, you're plagiarizing. Like fuck off. How I many movies? Move- very how- different from The Ex- Exorcist, though. It is very different. And how many movies were made in this? decade that were even more like the exorcist than this was that it's just fucking bullshit it is there, there was obviously like a fucking there, there was some uh, dealings behind the scenes someone was like you know politicking to get this fucking thing destroyed basically you know next film you know they had the same problem that this film had with the, with the exorcist and but they had the the, the people to, to pay off with that so mm-hmm. they they got to keep their movie I, I hope that somebody finds a print of Abby and says, you know what, this is okay to put out now, and I'm I'm looking forward to when that happens. You know, it just, it's, and I'm sure eventually it will happen. Because um, yeah. they'd be fine yeah. as some stuff. I'm looking forward to when that print of Martin comes out that's like three hours long or something. Ooh. Oh, me too. Yeah. Isn't it in black and white? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what I thought, yeah. Uh, but, but as this one stands, like, you can get you can get a version of it off Rare Lust that looks like it's okay. You know, it's like the best possible like shitty VHS version you can find. And then like, there's three or four versions of Abby on YouTube right now. The one I shared with us was, you know, it was watchable. Yeah. It, it was, it wasn't so bad that you, you were like, Oh God, what what's going on there? You know what it reminded me of when you were in elementary school and they brought out the TV and it was like some ancient VHS that like they blew the dust off and put it into the VHS. That's <laughs> the quality it reminded me of. Yeah. <laughs> 
I, I did that one with Ricky, the, the Legend of Hillbilly John, which is a great film. Oh, yeah. But, but the print was like three times worse than this on YouTube, and it's the only print that we could find. So, oh, mm-hmm. yeah. It, it's a shame. That's such a good movie, too. That was like the movie we watched the other day for the podcast. I can't remember the name now. Oh, uh, oh, um, a fucking uh, House of Death or yeah. uh, a Silent Screams. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, that one was just bad on youtube like the copy because that's there was parts of the movie you couldn't even tell what's going on so that's the unfortunate thing like i feel like these movies would visually be nicer to watch if you had better copies but just kind of difficult to get yeah it's unfortunate because it does take away because there's some scenes where you're like yeah this is this is not pretty to look at at all cool uh i'll, I'll kick it back to you there lady lee and anything else you want to say about abby and would you give it one to ten um I absolutely loved Abby just herself. Like that performance that she did throughout, I thought was amazing. Uh, from beginning to end, she was like basically the star of the movie. Um, I'm gonna go with a solid seven. I very much enjoyed it. I thought it was entertaining. I enjoyed the acting in it. I enjoyed um, I enjoyed the fact that there was a, a nice story to start it off with. It was a very like kind of heartwarming story and that she was like just got her certification for marriage counseling and she was already like working with at risk youth and a part of the church all sorts of stuff i like that so i like like the development i thought the development was really good oh you know what before you go on the other people you know that reminded me of one of the things in the imdb parents guide or whatever for the for the content in this is someone wrote down a marriage car marriage counselor makes out with somebody in a car that <laughs> oh how scandalous i think she's doing more than that in the car is all i'm yeah. saying about that one yeah. it was smoking by the end mm. <laughs> they weren't paying attention they weren't paying attention <laughs> at all they were doing more than heavy petting is all i'm gonna say mm-hmm. <laughs> um kick it to he, cameron i'm sorry go i'm sorry lee i was gonna say he evaporated it was so good oh yeah <laughs> Cameron, um, your final thoughts and, and what is it, one to ten? So your rating? Ah, uh, one to ten. Um, geez, I don't know. Like, I, I think it, it's it's a fun movie. It's just not a good movie. It's, you know, it's not a technically good movie. It's not like our our next feature we're doing Beyond the Door. That that's that's a more technically sound movie. But this is just it, you know, the print is as good as it gets, and it's as, as good as we're gonna get. And this is kind of how uh, they wanted Grindhouse to look at. They had the balls to do it <laughs> the mm. right way. <laughs> But I love Carol Speed in it. Um, again, fun movie, not a not a great movie, but I will give it a six out of ten. But that, I love I love William Marshall in it. He, he's totally in a different movie. I wanted to be able to ask him, you know, like what movie did you think you were in? But uh, <laughs> but yeah, but it's a good good six out of ten. I'd recommend it. It's funny. Cool, uh, Lee. Yeah, it's like like I said again, like. Don't go into it expecting like a serious horror movie. It, it's very much like even if they didn't intend it to be, it's a comedy. Just just do the circumstances around filming it and how some people are doing certain things with their performance and some people aren't. And man, I just I feel like I if if only I could find a good print of this to watch, I could give like a really solid fucking score on this. You know, like definitive. Um, but as it stands, it is a little rough to watch at parts just because of the technical faults of the of the prints that are out there. Um, but it, it is a fun party movie. It's a unique one for even like black exploitation in certain respects. Um, and it even stands out from the black exploitation horror movies. Uh, I think it's one of the better ones. Um, I'm going to go with a seven out of 10 on this one copycat <laughs> oh, 7.5 then take it i'll take it <laughs> um i thought it was interesting if you read the imdb notes that um this film was filmed on location in louisville kentucky and they were plagued by tornadoes the whole time almost so oh no it's like a cursed production in a way in that way in that sense and um so those Probably were special those were special effects in the house there oh maybe not maybe they, they recorded <laughs> They just opened the, they opened the windows, you know, and they said, hey, you go, here's some wind for y'all. Yeah. yeah, they recorded all the footage at the end, so all the the first footage of them acting. They're like, yeah, okay, now we just need breaking furniture. We'll just keep a camera, let the tornadoes hit, and take that footage. <laughs> <laughs> 
but but like like Lee said, it's not a it's not a well. Cameron said it's not, it's not a great movie. But it's a fun movie to watch. Mm. I, I will agree with everything that he said there. Um, if you look at this from a whole different angle, saying this is just Abby finding her independence through a sex demon named Ishu. You know, it could be like a a fabulous you know lady independence movie. This is waiting to excel, waiting to uh, exhale with with um with a sex demon. You know, although the marriage was not really on the rock, she just kind of got. She happenstance to marry the guy that released the sex demon out of a, out of a wooden stump, you know. Which well, I mean, her, I mean, her oh, husband sorry. was kind. Of, her husband was kind of a cuck, right? Yeah, he, yeah, he, yeah. He, oh, he got by a lot. <laughs> he got cucked by Ishu. So, like, <laughs> it, it it took it took Ishu steaming her up in the shower to actually give her an, or, an orgasm for the first time. I guess you, you don't see this movie needed. This movie needed where where Abby would bring in the delivery man in the house. Like a like a like an old school porno film, and the <laughs> husband walks it on him, fucking just getting it in, and you know, Abby, what are you doing? <laughs> he's a better man than you are, you know, or some he's, shit like that. You know, he's giving me some French bread. <laughs> so, what's interesting about the point that you just made, like the whole having an orgasm in the shower with the devil, uh, the Exorcist was kind of based on the fear of women getting their periods and kind of changing, becoming women. So going from like child to woman. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of the the reality of like what happens when you let a woman have an orgasm. Yeah. (laughs) She goes fucking crazy. (laughs) (laughs) Abby finally achieved, uh, you know, her vinegar strokes and you just let, let (laughs) Ishi on in baby. You know, she had that orgasm. She touched herself and had that orgasm. So the devil Mm. was welcome in. I mean, the demon was welcome in. The devil's doorbell, as the Catholics would call it, you know. Oh yeah, but butt, st- but, that, <laughs> but butt stuff is okay as long as you're straight, you know. You're just, um... Oh yeah, mm-hmm. that's the God's hole, the yeah. secret hole. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, well, that's, that's fine. This is fun. See, I'm I'm, I'm tired, so I'm, I'm much more loopy than normal, and this is cool. <laughs> next, next up. I'm the, listen, I'm the stuff we're gonna do. God damn it, guys! <laughs> we're doing Beyond the Door next from 1974. You'll hear about that from us. Oh, wait, we're, wait, we're doing Beyond the Door? Uh huh. Oh shit! I thought it was Beyond the Door three. Oh man! There's, nah, there's I'm just fucking. There, you know? I'm just fucking with, with you. I'm just fucking with you. We're doing mm. Beyond the. We're doing Beyond the Green Door. You know. Oh, oh yeah. Damn. Oh, well, that, in that case, I watched that as well. So we're good. There you go. Good to go. Good was it Devil Within Her? And then what was the other one? Who are you? Where are you? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it had several titles. Yeah. All the all the films, by the way, in the Beyond the Doors franchise had different titles because it was oh. just the typical Italian. Oh, we're going to name the, this movie that's totally unrelated Beyond the Door Two, and we're going to do the same thing with Beyond the Door Three. Well, well, yeah. here, here's the trailer for Beyond the Door One right now. The door where demonic possession lives and evil penetrates the soul. Step inside, if you dare. Who are you? (laughs) Jessica has gone beyond the door. At first, she didn't believe, but she does now. George, you're going to help me, George? Take me away from here. Remember Jessica? How beautiful she was. Sensitive, like a child. This is my child, mine, do you hear? I'll never let you kill it. It will be born. I'll kill anyone who tries to take him from me. I'll kill you! I'll kill you! (laughs) Mommy! Mommy! Inside her, a new life is struggling desperately to compel itself into existence. Just as I thought. I knew it. Is that all you're going to do to help me? Biological absurdity. That the development of the fetus is proceeding with absolutely incredible speed. Papa, don't leave Ken and me alone again with Mommy. You can't stand the thought of their existing being so powerful and strong as to break through. No one must attempt to interfere with her pregnancy, you understand? The child must be born. Beyond 
the door where demonic possession lives and grows and grows and beyond the door we dare you not to believe beyond the door from 1974 uh your cheapo plot synopsis is this Juliet Mills plays a young pregnant woman in San Francisco who is going to have the devil's baby during her strange possession. Richard Johnson shows up to help her, but does he? What does he really want? Oh, Dimitri, Dimi, 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 Dimi. You know, <laughs> <laughs> the star student we just mentioned, uh, Juliet Mills as Jessica, our, our expected mother and mother of two of the most amazing kids who leave the film too soon. Uh, <laughs> Richard Johnson is Dimitri, apparently the devil's harbinger part of the time. Uh, Gabriel Lavia is Robert Barrett, her husband. Uh, Nino Segurini, I said that right, hopefully. Nailed it. As a doctor. Dr. George uh, Stetton. And um, there's some other folks in this movie, too. <laughs> so this this uh, has, is written and directed by uh, names I'm not going to try to pronounce. Ovidio G. Asinitis. There you and go. Oh, yes. Roberto Pizzololi. That's, that's some hard words to say. Pizzoli, <laughs> something like that. Uh, you know, uh, I think you feel bad. I'm half Sicilian and I can't fucking say it. <laughs> I'm yeah. half Italian and I suck at it too. So, <laughs> so I, I I do want to mention before we get out of the cast, though, like, um, so the voice of the devil in this is Edward L. Montoro, and he was the producer of this film. Uh, he he was he headed up Film Ventures International. And made like just a shit ton of B movies in the seventies and eighties, and you know notoriously did this. He did Grizzly with William Girdler that we talked about in the previous film, um, and all of them were basically just ripoffs of like you know The Exorcist, Jaws, whatever you know, just just the ripoff uh, thing. He was one of the big names in the in the ripoff market. Uh, he did Great White, um, and of course he, he got sued for Great White, I believe. Uh, and he famously disappeared. Uh, he was in a divorce and he lost a bunch of money on his last film. So he basically cleaned the coffers of his uh, film company and disappeared. Some people think to South America and they never heard from him again. He just he vanished. <laughs> so Metal, it's man. an uh, interesting little trivia there. But he is the voice of the devil in this. And uh, yeah. Guy led an interesting life, apparently. That's fascinating. The weirdest thing is, if you look at his IMDb, there's a credit for him as a producer for a movie in 1993, which I don't know how that's possible, because that movie, even though it was on the shelf for a couple of years, he was actively not around anymore making movies. So I don't, I don't, I think it might just be an IMDb fuck up or whatever, but uh, uh, it is on his credits for some reason. He, he sets this up like a really shitty fantasy film. Now, let's see what's going to happen next after, you know, I send you on this mission to, you know, get this woman. And, mm. and he gives the guy three days to do it. This movie takes a lot long, long, long longer than three days. Um, I'll stop right there and kick it to Cameron first and ask, uh, the, beyond the door, what do you think of it, sir? Well, uh, this is the only second time I've ever watched it. It's probably been a good 15, 15 12 years maybe since I've watched this. And... It's the type of stuff I like. It's Italian horror films. You know, I, I love that as a subgenre. Uh, but this movie just doesn't do it well. It feels a lot like, uh, you know, Fulci without the gore, if it makes sense. It's just like, okay, we're going to do Fulci light. Uh, I think they underuse Richard Johnson when he... Uh, when he comes along at the end, it's like it's not even to an hour in that they even give him a chance to do anything other than stand around and look, I don't know, like a creepy Columbo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, I'm just going to stare at you for a long time. And the kids, the fucking kids, I know we're all probably going to touch base on it, so I, mean, I won't take too too much for, from anybody, but the, the drinking of pea soup from a can, uncooked, with a yeah. straw, all the time, all day, every day, packing it away in his overnight bag, it has a poster for it above his bed. What the fuck is up with that it's kid on the it's on <laughs> it's it's a joke that's so on the fucking nose like and and they're trying to make like a serious horror film here too but that joke is there right like it, it's fucking, right 
it's like you know some fucking italian guy or some fucking american that was in the, in the co-production with this or something was like you know oh the pia soup uh, yes everybody likes the pia soup from the exorcist let's put it in as a joke eh? <laughs> stupid americans you know kind of thing like fucking it's it's so weird like it's it's, it's a it's weird aesthetic. Of... It's a weird aesthetic. I mean, I can understand having to be in the kid, the kid being creepy and all, mm. but I mean, the the, the other kid. The, I mean, the, both kids are creepy. Let's face it; both these kids are creepy. Major Anytime creepy. you add an adult voice to a child, it's always going to be creepy. I mean, that, <laughs> right, and that happens so many times in in these films, right? Like the dubbing, like notoriously, like Bob in Host by the Cemetery. Obviously, like there's a grown woman doing a child's voice for him in that movie, right? Same thing here, man. It's like it's obviously fucking adults doing childlike voices for these two kids, and they're talking like they're like uh lazy, pissed off, cynical 17 year olds. Like, yeah, and what? they're like eight and tw- what 10. <laughs> and the parents talk like fucking infants. Like, it's it, it's hard to think that it wasn't intentionally done that way as some sort of joke, but I don't think it was. I just feel like they didn't know. They Especially don't... with the big, the big picture of like the Campbell's soup in the background, you automatically think this is going to be like a comedic version of uh, The Exorcist, like with oh, those yeah. children's non voices and the freaking can of pea soup everywhere, mm-hmm. and the the seventeen books, the same book, not even like one <laughs> different books of the same art author, seventeen of the same books, like all this stuff, you just think it's going to be like kind of more comical, but it wasn't comical. <laughs> That's, in, that's, in, all. that's the excuse that Steve Martin gives in My Blue Heaven. Why do you need 30 copies of the book? In case I want to read it again, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, oh God. <laughs> that's my answer. <laughs> 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 There's so many things, so many things that like made me frustrated. Yes. I don't know if I should keep going. I don't know if someone else wants to go before, or if Cameron has something else to say before I start. Uh, 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 was pretty much it. Other than uh, the one big question I had to ask, this movie—I mean, it, it's it's oddly paced. I mean, let's face it; yes. it's, it's much like uh, Abby, but it's much better. Uh, it's shot much much better. It looks better. It's a lot crisper. At least the print that I watched on Shutter was a lot better. Than, mm-hmm. It made my enjoyment of watching the movie a lot better. But my biggest question is, and this is going to sound way out of left field, but what was the what the hell was up with the banana peel eating, eating scene? The the, the I. I I totally don't get that. As, as she just all of a sudden stops, like, hmm, I'm just going to grab this random banana peel and eat it. Definitely waste should, not, I guess. Waste that whatnot. Insanity? I don't know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I don't, I, I think, like, it, it's just a case of Italian filmmakers seeing something that's really popular, Exorcist. And it's like, okay, we're going to make our own version of it, but we don't understand any of the context of what's happening in The Exorcist and why that spoke to audiences we just know the big set pieces we know it's weird we know weird shit happens we know we have to shake the room around and have her head twist around and do weird shit and that's we know there it. has to be pea soup it has to be pea soup all over the fucking place like you got to drown in that shit let's get a let's get campbell's as a sponsor apparently right uh, right because you know you see them campbell's cans with the straw in them right up front man and then also it's like oh yeah we're not gonna we're gonna make our voiceover stuff or you know our post dubbing we're gonna make it so incredibly obvious too because the opening scene we're in the, in the, they're in the car there's no background noise from the car or anything you just hear their voices going and it's like mm-hmm. are they narrating this or are they talking oh no their mouths their mouths are moving so they're talking this is supposed to be a scene this is not narration this is weird as fuck why is this happening this is not how you do movies. This is not even how you do movies in Italy. Why are they doing it here? I don't get it. It's like I had the most normal kids in San Francisco. One's reading a love story. The other one's drinking pea soup out of a can with a straw. They're, and they're, like, they're the... it, it basically like telling you his mother the fuck off or whatever the fuck. Like... I have a theory that they, because a the father asked if the kids were crazy. So I have a theory that they did that because later in the movie when – uh, the mother goes nuts and like freaks out and the kids are trying to tell the dad like don't leave us here with the mom that he just thinks he has crazy kids 
So I think I, that's kind of why they did it that way. Possibly. I mean, it, I mean, I think it's pretty goddamn obvious that the son is fucking possessed. Like there, there's there's something going on with him, right? Like no, from beginning it, to end, because he's there's oh, all yeah. these there's all these weird shots where he's like staring at his mother and shit, like in weird times. It's like that kid's fucking sinister, man. Like there's something fucking going on with the him. The fact that the mother was freaking out and moving all the furniture and doing all the stuff, and the kid's just standing there, like, oh hey, cool, hey, hey yeah. mom, <laughs> hey, oh my god, oh yes, <laughs> sorry. And going fu- on some other topic now. <laughs> yeah, it's... the kid was fucking creepy. Like, yeah, the voiceover just made it worse. The daughter seemed so like indifferent, especially with the voice that was being made. So her acting was like very mediocre. Not gonna bitch. It's a fucking <laughs> child in the seventies. But mm-hmm. the voiceover on top of that just made it worse. Like the one point where they go ah, and then they do a voice dub with ah. It looks so stupid and like <laughs> <it's> just... <laughs> <It's> terrible. <laughs> Also, just yeah. very weird. Like, is this also a black exploitation movie? Because the soundtrack, <laughs> the soundtrack kind of tells you it is for a while. Like Hold the on. opening scene. <laughs> First of all, I started watching this movie, and uh, either a title came up that I was like, "Wait, am I watching the right movie?" I'm like, "Okay, I have to be. Like, it has to be the right movie." And as it's going on, and I see this intro with music, I'm like, "Am I watching the right movie?" <laughs> <laughs> So I have to like Google it and I make sure and I'm like, okay, yeah, yeah, I'm watching the right movie because the change, well, because the title that pops up on the movie and the title when you IMDb it and the title that like is on uh, Shutter are three different titles. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, <laughs> hey, we're gonna keep you guessing. And also, we discover that our, you know, our our husband here is the worst fucking person in the world. He's the he's a massive dick, right? Like he he in the opening, he's he's this white corporate fucking record dude telling these black dudes they don't know how to fucking play their music first off and it's like no that sounds pretty good i don't know what the fuck you're talking about like that that's record worthy shit they're playing right there and you're trying to tell them you're trying to like white explain to them how music's supposed to work i guess or something like that and then he he just goes out of his way to shit on his wife in every opening scene we see with them two together like just you know, oh, you're silly, you're stupid. Oh, I, I could have fucked my secretary. Like all kinds of weird shit he's talking about, and it's like your our kids, kids are crazy. Are, our kids are crazy. Like what? Did he see our kids or said your kids? I, I can't remember. I think she, that, I think I he think... says cause it, it's weird. The kids like call call their mother by like her first name. It, there's some weird shit. Like the, the the little brother actually also tells his sister to go stop herself or something at some point. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was okay. And then the part, the part that really pissed me off was when the the mother was having like violent um, morning sickness, like she was uncontrollably vomiting, and she's like, "I want this child out of me." And he's like, "We'll talk about it later," like in the most <laughs> mellow tone possible. I'm not saying <laughs> you have to go agree with her right away, but I'm saying you should probably be a lot more supportive if. The woman who's carrying your unborn fucking child is going through a hell of a time trying to carry this child. You might want to fucking care. Well, that's Although, that's that's, that's especially they pull from Rosemary's Baby, especially that mm-hmm. that kind of theme right there, to where you know, guy Woodhouse r- rapes his wife, you know, while while she's sleeping. He said, "Well, you know, Rose, time for sex." You know, it's it's, it's uh. And you want me to watch that movie? <laughs> no, they they don't show the rape. She's actually raped by the devil. But you know, it's 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 the said to say that her husband. That, that makes it infinitely better. Yeah, you know. yeah, of course. Um, but I mean, to be fair, like she's a terrible mother, also by the way, because like in like in the opening part of the film, she basically just leaves her kids in the open top car while she goes shopping. Oh yeah, in the in the grocery store, it's like, what are you doing? Like you want these kids to be abducted, like that, and I don't blame you, frankly. But I mean, still, it doesn't make you much of a mother. Uh, they're, it's pretty. They're funny. very, they're very independent kids. To be fair, come on, man. You know? I guess, I guess they are. Fuck. Again, man. it's also like the seventies too. So our child care abilities. Kids were better. tougher back then, right? You know, it's we more to... like it was a lot more acceptable to just kind of leave your kids do their own thing. Mm. We, we no I'm longer not have in all cases, but. We're... We no longer have the way back on, on vehicles now and new cars, so that's all I'm saying. Yeah. We have seatbelts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, 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 still, I'm still perturbed that they're taking away my choice and my freedoms, making me wear a seatbelt, by the way. Don't you even know? start. Don't even start. I know, I know. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, okay, so 
uh one thing i have to say about the main actress um she gives me like major Kristen dunce vibes like certain angles when i saw her i'm like oh hey oh hey mm. yeah Kristen dunce. um and she has really pretty eyes I couldn't not put that in because all the fucking Italian movies always find people with gorgeous goddamn eyes. They, they fucking crazy. Like when we watched uh, Watch Out, We're Mad, the uh, the Terrence Hill, Bud Spencer film, where yeah. Terrence Hill has like these incredibly blue fucking eyes that are just like mesmerizing. And then there's like a hitman in that film that has these intense gray eyes that are yep. like crazy. It's like, yeah. It was like that, um, the first... Um, um oh my god spaghetti western you showed me and, oh yeah yeah the main actor he had like stupid gorgeous eyes i don't know if they go and like literally audition people and be like let us see your eyes let me just look at your eyes and make sure that they're blue enough or gray enough or green enough but they have to be bright and they have to stick out and you have to see like the prettiest fucking eyes so many so many like of those films it's just like yeah they, they do pick people with pretty distinct fucking eyes man um i want to bring up uh how the music didn't match the movie at all oh not at all like the one scene when the whole exorcism is kind of starting and the the uh husband leaves and there's this whole fucking sequence of music happening what was that the The, music didn't match the moment the funky music the fucking flute with the nose oh the uh the aggressive jazz nose flute attack that happened to yeah, him. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> what what was the point of that scene? What was the point of it being that long? And what was the music compared to the whole movie? You know what I I don't care because at that point I was so tuned out of this movie that the fact that that happened brought me back into the film. It went way too long. They could have kept it for like maybe halved it or quartered it, and I would have been fine. Well, I was the whole expecting... time I was like, "Oh my god, can we stop seeing the guy with fucking flute up his nose?" Well, I was expecting <laughs> him. I expected him at one point to punch this fucking flute dude, right? Because it's like how, it's how up long in his he... face, extremely up in his face. Yeah, should have punched him. It, it was pretty <laughs> aggressive, you know. But fucking, I mean, I I do actually kind of like the score, but it, but Lee, you're right, it does not fit the film at all. Like there was it's... a part where the kid was crying, and they're playing the most upbeat elevator music I think I've ever heard. <laughs> Like, I'm like, isn't there supposed to be something dramatically terrible happening? And the voiceover <laughs> narration in the weirdest parts, like just we're gonna tell a story with the soft voice as this other part that has nothing to do with the story that we're telling is going to be telling you a story. Like, it's part of the charm of these, though, right? Because like I had, okay, just hold a second here. <laughs> uh, so, so part of the charm of these is that. I have this theory that the Italians have no idea of what North American culture is like back then. Like they just have no idea or they're incredibly highly critical and they're mocking us when they're making these movies. Maybe either, either way they just make these incredibly disjointed obtuse films. And that's kind of why we gravitate towards them. Like that's kind of why we watch like Fulci films and stuff because on, on the face, they make no fucking sense and they're obtuse and weird and weird shit happens that makes no fucking sense and there's gore randomly and then like you know you have like fucking little kids with adult voices and shit and it's like is this a joke at, at some point do i care because i'm entertained by it anyway so it's i mean in this movie not so much because i'm once i get to my final thoughts of this like I, this movie's got a lot of problems but um it's it's not a strong italian horror movie as far as i'm concerned but I think as a whole, like I, I just feel like the Italian exploitation industry at this point, they kind of had an idea of what to sell to us, but at the same time, I don't think they quite understood who they were selling to. <laughs> I think they Coca- just tried oh, way too hard. Sorry, go on. Oh, you're okay, okay, okay. I'll just say Coca Cola, Campbell's soup, you know, America. Yeah. Come on, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking soup. I honestly thought when I first saw the can, again, this movie's from like the seventies. Now we're twenty twenty. So I honestly thought it was like condensed milk or something. So I was like, maybe that's something. That's what I thought it was at first, right? But but then it's like, oh no, that's pea soup. He, he loved he loved the soup so much that when they were to leave the house because mom's gone nuts, so they packed the Campbell's soup within his suitcase or in his bag to say, J- just a couple cans for the road, you know. <laughs> how much how much money do you think Campbell's soup put into this production? Like <laughs> whatever it was, it was way too much. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I feel like pea soup now. 
Even um, if I did, the last one I would want to get is some Campbell's night now. No, no. So it kind of does bug me when they bring up um, female reproductive things. Because uh, when she mentioned saying that she had like her period, her normal periods, for however long, um, doesn't mean you're not pregnant. <laughs> every fucking person knows this. Every girl knows this. If you're having mm. any issues and your your period's the same, but you're having like other symptoms, you go get a pregnancy test. It's not something that's new. It's known for a very long time. It just pisses me off because it's in a movie. <laughs> like, can you at least get that fact right? Like, it's not shocking to be more pregnant or yeah, further along than you thought you were initially. It happens to a lot of women. <laughs> so for her to be like, well, I already had a period. <laughs> really? Why did you put that in the movie? Mm. You don't understand how female body works. Don't put it in the fucking movie. It's just yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. Rosemary's Baby will really make you angry because that whole film is about poor Rosemary and everybody else deciding what happens with her body and her baby, essentially. You know? Mm. And, yeah. Mm. The, the, their doctor, her husband, neighbors, everybody just deciding her fate, you know? Although it's interesting. So, like, uh, the original Exorcist is about uh, a, a woman uh, coming into sexual maturity, and then we we talked about how Abby is about a woman finding her sexual independence. This movie is about the fears of pregnancy, very much so. Like it, it's, it's, and it is it's not so much an Exorcist ripoff as it is a Rosemary's Baby ripoff. Like well, it's, it's much very... more Rosemary's Baby than it is Exorcist. And then it also predicts the Omen a little bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Especially had... with oh, the yeah. ending. Yeah. Mm. Um, one thing that was really funny was that the 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 main actress she was left handed. It's very uncommon for Italians to be left handed because it's really yeah. Because if you're left handed, like they force that shit out of you. <laughs> that I mean, that's not wrong. That was definitely a thing that used to happen. Um, my dad was born right handed or left handed, and um, when he was in school, uh, they used to beat him, beat his hand to force him to write uh, right handed. Yep, that was really common. My mom was telling me about it because uh, I don't think she was, but I think she knew somebody who was left-handed. And they basically like tie your right hand or left hand to the chair. And if you try to use your left hand for anything, they like beat your fucking hand. Mm-hmm. So that's why when I saw her being left-handed, I was like, "Ooh, ooh, she she had a liberal parent." <laughs> <laughs> I love some of the dialogue in this movie to death, though. Uh, the sister constantly saying you know it's gonna be a you're gonna have a bad trip like, like she's high on drugs all the time or something yeah. like if you do this it's gonna be a bad trip she says it like three times in the movie or something and um our mom our our, our possessed person in this movie but she's got the green stuff coming from her her mouth and oh man something about come, come eat the vomit of this whore or something she says and you know, it's real silly Oh, the, the 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 scene where she, you know, she spreads her legs is like, take the baby out of me, Dimitri. You know, whatever, <laughs> like, and it's like, I almost, like, she ends up, like, vomiting on him. I expected for a second for her to squirt on him. Like, it's like <laughs> it, it felt like they were going to go that way, right? The, for, a hot, the, for a hot second, it sure did. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I, my water broke. It's time, Dimitri. It's time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you caught the one part where the vomit was white and then it turned green. Like when it No, I didn't see that. Yeah, when he first vomits, she first vomits, it's white. And then when he gets on him, it goes green. Oh, okay. It's just a small oh. thing. The, the, small. Line the, the line at the beginning that Lee was talking about, about him shitting all over the, the recording artist. Something about... Cast you guys eating are, a yeah, jellyfish? Cast eating a jellyfish, that line, yes. And yeah. it's like, yeah. I wrote that in my notes. I thought it was pretty funny. Lots, like, lots, of, lots of jellyfish dicks out there. That's a big problem, you know. <laughs> I do yeah. um I do think it's funny that uh the doctor didn't think he was important enough to tell the mother that there was an issue with the baby. He's like, <laughs> I didn't want to worry her, so I'm gonna tell you the husband. Um there's something wrong with the baby, but uh we're not gonna tell her. We're gonna tell her family friends and we're gonna tell everybody else, but we're not gonna tell her. That feels actually that, pretty that, on point for the nineteen seventies, right? Like it feels yeah, like, oh, the men the men are gonna decide what happens. That's nineteen seventies healthcare straight up. Yeah. It it's it's pretty it's pretty gross, but it, it feels pretty uh apt for the it actually feels like one of the more realistic things that happens in this movie. And then the three month old pregnancy when she was like tiny with no belly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Especially after that's your third child, it's gonna show. Uh, <laughs> Biology <laughs> 
what one of the things I have with this movie is, you know, this the, the mother when she's possessed, she has psychic powers, much like Reagan and the Exorcist. You know, so the point where they tie Reagan to the bed and when they put the straitjacket on her, you know, not until they take the straitjacket off is she able to use her psychic powers. I, I call bullshit on that, you know, and she should be like, like move your head, move your head and just mm-hmm. Move, move, whatever you want to move, and knock your husband against the wall. Whatever you want to do, and um, a stray jacket should have no no bearing on her her powers as a possessed person. You know, yeah, it could have been used to see how much control she actually had, maybe. Because I know at one point she has a stray jacket on, and she just uses her mind powers and rips it off. So mm-hmm. I guess it was just trying to like cover up how powerful she was. I don't know, but I said the same thing. I thought it was well, stupid. Yeah. <laughs> Even then, Ray- Reagan was able to break her bonds of eventually, or, or, or whatever she wanted to, and float in the air. Yeah. And, um, and it's, uh, speaking of that, I think the effects work is really, really good in this. Like, mm-hmm. fucking immaculate, honestly, especially for the time. The man face with the boobies. When it was the girl <laughs> with the boobies, mm-hmm. and then the man face came in, it was a very smooth transition. Weird. And it, yeah, no, I was also like, thank you, thank you, Italy. Uh, you gave us full frontal nudity right under the bat, you know, you know, give us, get, get us, get us sucked into the movie, you know. Give us some titties. I want mm-hmm. all of them titties. <laughs> like, at first I thought, is, is this our main actress? Is she seeing herself on the altar? Because they were pretty similar looking. I was like, oh no, okay, it's not her. The boobies are smaller. Um, <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, the plot, you know, and, and, and I mean, plot here real thin is that I got it, that she was coming to this party at her false pretenses or something, mm-hmm. and then she bounced. And But yeah. she was the chosen one to have the, the devil baby, or maybe not have the devil baby, because the baby must be born to, to, I don't know. They don't explain why yeah. it's supposed to happen, and why, you know, Dimitri has an interest, because he's promised, if this devil baby happens, I won't kill you in ten years, or whatever the fuck, you know, kind of thing. Um, but, and so, like, also, he's kind of played off as like he's the Max von Sydow character in this film, kind of in a way. But yeah. he's also it's his own self interest that he's interested in, right? It's like, oh, the devil won't kill me if I make sure this baby is born. But, but he's constantly helping them, which is yeah. the problem with this movie. Is like the devil control. He holds all the cards, controls your fate, could kill you at any time. But you're still helping the, these people succeed into thwarting the devil. And then the it, devil, it, re- yeah, the devil reveals to Dimitri at the end. It's like I was just fucking with you all the time, bro. And it's like no shit because you controlled everything from the fucking get go. Everyone already knew it. It's like okay. It was, uh, it was quite confusing. Same with like locations. I found that um, you'd end up in a different scene and you'd be like, wait, where are we now? Like it was just there wasn't mm. really a real explanation. You just kind of had to figure it out eventually. Um, I don't think they transitioned very well from like location to location. And why oh. on earth would you start an exorcism and be like, oh, hey, bud, yeah, stay with my wife, and I'm just going to go, even though you're an ex-lover and she's pregnant and in this vulnerable situation and you're fucking crazy, I'm going to go for a walk for two hours. I mean, we established the husband's a dick. I mean, he's... <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you got to leave it to the experts there, Lee, and you know, that's what he was thinking the whole time. I would stay in the house. I wouldn't be in the room, but I would stay in the house. My, well, my... Even Abby's husband left her alone, but he knew she was fucked up, you know, so. Yeah. My my bigger my bigger question is, why did the mom start French kissing her, her baby son? Yeah! Just what the fuck in, was man. Yeah, that was, that was odd. That was odd. Like, and that went nowhere? And I'm glad it went nowhere, by the way. Um, Don't get that well, twisted, but, uh, like, that um, was the... That was just weird. That was like, what is this yep. burial grounds? Nights of Terror now, all of a sudden, you know, like what the fuck's going on? Shit. I, I was shook at that's different. how the kid got, uh, why he was possessed or whatever, you know, had his, you know, called glowy eyes at the end. Maybe, or maybe she transfers something to him. It's the only halfway logical thing I can think of. Yeah. I thought the transfer but, was from like the baby, the newborn baby being dead and then the, the youngest. Yeah, it might older. be. But he also had that weird mark, that weird bruise as well. So he, with the kid, was marked from the get go. I think the kid was a demon from the get go. Like, yeah, I that's, the kid was that was oh, totally, demon. totally. Like, there's no way the kid was sane at all. Like, he was the weirdest fucking kid, possibly. <laughs> if neither of the demons has taught me anything, if you make out with somebody, you get possessed by a demon. God damn it! And you mm-hmm. know, yeah, if, that's if, how that works. If, if Linnea Quigley French kisses you, you are going to be possessed. Well, he was possessed. <laughs> So mm-hmm, yeah, 
<laughs> he was always possessed. Uh, but by the way, I'll, I'll mention we did mention like sort of like uh, oh this kind of Fulci light. Like the the biggest part where it really is like Fulci is where early on she goes out on like this night walk and the husband sit in the house looking at these like worm covered muddy footprints that she left in the house or whatever. I was like, wow, what? He's not even trying to clean the worms up or anything. He's just sitting at the couch like, oh, what am I going to do? And then there's all these worms squirming on the fucking floor. It's like, that's very Fulci right there. Like, that's right, like, right. That, that's so Fulci. And like, this is way before Fulci was doing this shit. So, like, Fulci, a fucking hack, by the way. This is, you know, <laughs> from that. I did out find there. there was a lot of scenes that were very pointless. Like, there was just cuts to scenes that you would see, and you're like, what's the point of this? Like, why are we adding this into the movie? I think it was just showing, trying to show off like some graphics. So, like, check out this skill that I have with the camera. Check out this graphic that I can do with editing. That's my biggest problem with this film is it's way too fucking long. It's twenty minutes too fucking long, honestly. Like there, there's, it's just so much shit that happens that doesn't mean anything and doesn't matter. And I'm like, I'm just like, okay, I get it. It's an Exorcist ripoff. It's a Rosemary's Baby's ripoff. You got the, you know, the requisite scenes mimicking the most iconic scenes from those films and then you got like 20 minutes extra of shit that did not need to be in there like this this film could have been 80 minutes could have cut 10 minutes alone with the the shot of her walking through the city and then eating the the, the banana peel yeah still yeah. question that <laughs> like why did that even need to be in there <laughs> man i must have clued out because i do not remember that scene it's hilarious <laughs> but that's that's the thing like this film like uh, that's my problem with it like I was actively like ch checking out in places because it's like, oh, another scene where she does a weird thing and she's possessed. Like, I get it. We don't need to keep repeating it necessarily. The poor fishies. Oh poor yeah, the fish, fish, the fish tank. That right. they that. and you, you know they didn't save those fish. They just no, let them die. They let them die. And they probably that last die. fish was going for it, man. He was like, "This is not my contract. This is not my contract." <laughs> um, what was with the big exposition dumps in this movie? Like the big dumps for for like five straight minutes, you got Dimitri going on and on, really about nothing. Those like were he, the narrating scenes I was talking about. Like, just what is this? <laughs> like, what you're you're saying, you're you're talking a lot, but you're not saying much, pal. <laughs> and then the scene that's going on, like the scene that they're filming, has nothing to do with the with the narrator saying. Like, no, no, it's just these two different. Oh, I went on this adventure where something happened, and I fell in love with this man. And uh, and then we see like this stupid scene of nothing. <laughs> There's a missing reel somewhere. Right? I don't know. <laughs> oh God, I hope not, because imagine how long that fucking film would be. Um, I did find it really funny when the kid was like crying and freaking out, and then like the next scene, the kid had this biggest smile on his face. Like when he got, to this, it's just like, weren't you just the most upset kid freaking out? And then, like, oh hey, you're just gonna be the smiliest kid. Kid's a demon. That's it. Yeah, yeah. He got exactly. his pea soup. He was all right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> pea soup. Fuck his mother. Like, he's, he's gonna like, make out with her later. <laughs> I mean, he was gonna fuck his mother eventually, I guess. <laughs> he's like, I'm living like a boss, making out with my mom, eating pea soup all day. Life's chill. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Went from titties to mouth. Oh yeah. <laughs> Jesus. God damn. Cold pea soup out of a can, you know. <laughs> oh. Um, uh, I did enjoy the, there was a one point they, I don't remember exactly the scene, but they had this like 70s porn music that was playing. I thought that was pretty comical. Like they just went through every type of music possible in this movie. I mean, I mean, that was, that was kind of in the, the scene where Dimitri's stalking the husband, kind of like following yeah, the okay, town. Yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, I wrote Dimitri right under it, and I, I couldn't remember. So yeah, yeah that, the, that music really doesn't fit the scenes. Like, what's going on here? Like, None this, of the music fits the scenes. None this, of it. <laughs> that music felt like it belonged in like Black Caesar or Hell Up in Harlem. It did not yeah, feel like it belonged beyond exactly. the door. You, you know what Dimitri is missing in those scenes? Costume changes. He should have been dressed as a waiter in the restaurant. <laughs> he should have been. You know? <laughs> it would have made it so much better. Uh, I was I watched it with Ryan, and he was telling me that the music he found was very distracting. Like it took mm -hmm. you away from the music because the uh, the music just did not match, and it just threw you off from the actual movie. No, that's true. My only other note here um, is that, that that stuck out to me is when she's got like the diodes on her head or whatever to like for, for you know to see what's going on. She looks exactly like the thinker from Suicide Squad. Like it, it's Peter <laughs> Capaldi all over again. Man. Oh shit, you're right. So it's like you know Suicide Squad. You fucking hacks. Like it's just they brought a they brought up hysteria, which made me laugh. 
<laughs> yeah. the word hysteria. Like, oh, just let her masturbate then. Yeah, just give her a dildo <laughs> in, a, in, in a padded room. It'll, yeah. It'll, it'll, be, it'll be good. Mind you, then we'd end up with um, Abby, so. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Well, the biggest scene is out of place for me, and, you know, it's very dismissive, especially of the sister, is when all the shit starts to come to life in their bedroom. You know, mm-hmm. the eyes start to glow on the doll, and light comes up from the floorboards, and, and uh, who decorated this room? I have no idea. But, um, Right after, it's like the sister's like, oh, yeah, I guess that was the thing that happened. And, you know, that was about it. And Yeah, she's like every doctor in the original Exorcist. So I guess that's the thing that happened. Mm-hmm. Psychosis. Psychosis. My Psychosis. brother's crazy. Psychosis. Yeah. Like, yeah. It explains everything. It explains the change. explains the fucking telekinesis. It explains everything. Psychosis. Oh, yeah. Although, at the very least, she's a kid. So kids kind of, they kind of roll the punches way that's better. True. And, yeah. yeah. That's, uh, that's- that's the biggest problem of this film. Those kids go away about halfway through, and I think they should be in hell film to see what's going on. You know? mm-hmm. I'm laughing at my notes because I wrote a lot of pointless scenes. Pointless jacket. Pointless jacket? <laughs> pointless jacket? Pointless jacket. <laughs> jacket. <laughs> jacket is pointless. <laughs> it's great. Um, I did, because uh, this was at first when we realized that she wanted to attack and they got the jacket back on her and then they took the jacket off to inject her nope nope anytime you see any of that in any movie in any fucking decade if you're in a stray jacket and you're going nuts you're getting the jab of the quad that's it Mm -hmm. (laughs) there's no like let's take it off and do it gently nope (laughs) (laughs) just just small things like that were it were annoying like i found the the movie's consistency was off the music was off the the scenes were off Mm. (laughs) it's just just a lot of small things that you could nitpick and be like really what were you thinking um i only thing i actually did like was when the girl said the mother said i want an abortion and the doctor said i agree (laughs) yeah only smart decision that doctor made the whole movie well I'll kick it to Cameron first, and is there any final thoughts on the film? What do you give it one to ten? Uh, final thoughts. Uh, I'll argue and decide. I think I like this one uh, a little bit more than Abby, not by much, only because it's a, it's a little slicker shot. It sounds a lot better. The acting is a little, little bit, a little bit more even. I'd probably give it a seven out of ten. Uh, my biggest problem is that they don't use uh, Richard Johnson really enough as Dimitri, and when they do use him, it's just kind of as a late Act Three kind of addition. He's kind of the highlight of the movie, but it, I, I, I just uh, I think the, the ending on that final note of the baby m- missing the mouth would have been the way to go, and not have that tacked on ending with the oh, what's his name, uh, little the little kid, <laughs> Ken, demon boy. <laughs> Yeah, the demon boy. I'm to say demon yeah. boy. I was forgot his name, but yeah, if they had just cut like with the shot of that that baby with no mouth, that had been a, the way to end it. Yeah. So yeah, I, I give it I give it a seven out of ten. Did that present unwrapping un- stress anybody else out? <laughs> it took a while, right? That stressed me out. That yeah. stressed me right out. That was tedious. Oh. It was tedious as fuck. And I thought it was the mother who was opening up first for whatever reason. And then I saw it was the son. Yeah, it felt like that kid was a bit slow. It's like, what are you doing? So long. So long. (laughs) Lady Lee, uh, final thoughts and what's your score? One out of ten. I was just, I had this in my notes. And I would like one of these Exorcist movies to actually have, like, a demon voice that's a female. So, Mm -hmm. especially, like, especially with a pregnant woman. When they were talking about the pregnancy thing, it was really hard for me to accept the fact that it was a male. Um, but yeah, I think it would be cool because they're possessing women, so it'd be cool to have like an actual female voice. And I'll especially, f- I'll find one for us to watch. Okay, and especially since um, a lot of things are about women's bodies, like sexuality and changing bodies and pregnancy, oh. it's all women issues. So it'd be cool to have a, a female like demon voice. Um, did I like this movie? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I honestly, the kids, the voiceover for the kids, I couldn't get past that. It was just too annoying the music was distracting um i did find the mother was uh a good actress i did enjoy her um and there was some of the acting in the movie that i did actually do didn't wow did i actually did really enjoy but uh overall i honestly wasn't impressed by the movie at all like i i was rather disappointed um i am gonna go the opposite i'm gonna go like i'm gonna go with the three i struggled to finish it i if i wasn't writing notes i probably would have fallen asleep <laughs> Fair enough. Lee? 
this is really the lesser of the uh, quote unquote series, the Beyond the Door series. Uh, yeah, there's uh, Mario Bava's Shock, which is Beyond the Door 2, uh, the way it was titled anyway. It's, it's, you know, it's not actually part of an actual series. And then there's uh, Beyond the Door 3, which is a uh, terror train and a muck train. And both of those are way better than this film. Um, uh, especially Shock. I think Shock is actually legit a really good film. Uh, Terror Train is just really fun. Um, this is a bit of a chore to get through. It's a bit too long. It's I'd say it's about 20 minutes too fucking long. Uh, there's a lot I would have cut out of this. Um, it, it does hit the big points of Rosemary's Baby and to a lesser extent The Exorcist. It's, it's, it's like Rosemary's Baby with Exorcist trappings around it kind of thing. <laughs> like like it's Rosemary's fair. Yeah, it's Rosemary's Babies with a lot of pea soup on it, basically. It's, it's <laughs> kind of what it is, right? And uh, they just don't... I just feel like they don't get what made those films effective, at least to viewers. Like, again, Lady Lee and I and Cameron uh, don't like the original Exorcist all that much. But, I mean, I do understand why it resonated with certain people and why it was a phenomenon that it was even though i don't think it's a good movie um this movie does not get what worked in those movies um it's very disjointed it's very long it's very tedious but it's also very slick it's got great special effects it's got some fun performances here and there but it's also very obtuse and makes no sense uh i'm gonna have to say it's it's kind of like lower middle tier Italian exploitation shit. And I'd have to throw about a five at it as far as my final rating on it. Yeah, you're not wrong. I'm I'm about middle of the road on it too. I, I would give it a six though. I had a good enough time with it to say that it's not all the way middle of the road, maybe like a five and a half. You know, just, just mm-hmm. push it over over the edge. Um not not a bad time. Like they said it's on shutter. You, you could buy it if you like it. I've never seen these sequels before, but I'm, I'm looking forward to checking them out. You know, they're all on Shutter too, by the way. Yeah, you know. nice. I do prefer these movies over the actual exorcism. Just saying, mm. <laughs> uh, the good. actual the actual exorcism done by the Exorcist demon. Is that what you say? Like the actual exorcism movie, like Exorcist. I mean, yeah, yeah. This is like if you take all the three of the movies, this the Exorcist would be like. The bottom of the three. Oh, I I, I also enjoy, I agree. I enjoy both of these more than The Exorcist. Like, <laughs> profusely. I think I enjoy Exorcist three more than I enjoy any of these. I mean, The Exorcist three is a fucking genuine like great film. Yeah, it's, it, which is very strange in and of itself. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, that's the end of this one, and we'll uh, come back and close up the show. Hello, this is the Doom Show. Keep on keeping on and keep on trucking, America. We don't listen to our feedback because we don't get any. (laughs) The truth hurts. I just alienated the two people that give us constant feedback. Sorry, guys. That's gotta go. (laughs) That's gotta go in there. So on the show, uh, we talk about giallo movies and slasher movies and cult movies. Sometimes we even talk about Cameron Mitchell and his movies. I am Richard. Who are you? I am Brad, the guy that's not Richard, or Jeffrey, or Simon. That's right. We have four people, and we always talk at once, except to each other. Jeffrey lives up north. Simon lives across the world. Richard lives in Penis, Alabama. Hello, This is the Doom Show is a proud member of the Legion Podcast Network. Check out the other shows on legionpodcast.com. You can check out more Hello, This is the Doom Show at hellodoomshow.podomatic.com or at doommoviethon.com. Check for our Amazon exclusive Hello, This is the Doom Show cookbook. Do you like hot dogs? (laughs) We got them. Do you like mac and cheese? We got it. Do you like cheddar? We have it. Actually, we don't. No, no cheddar. Just Colby. Colby Jack. Hello, this is the Doom Show. We never gave up on you because you never gave up on us. Wow. Um, thank you all for this great uh, crossover event of sorts. It's Saturday night uh, special of Exorcist, Exorcist ripoffs in, in a way. And um, uh, I'll kick it to whoever wants to say where they're from. Uh, do you want to do, pimp your stuff, Lee or Lady Lee? Who mm. wants to pimp the stuff here? Yeah. I'm going to let Lady Lee do it. I think I'll let Lee do it. 
<laughs> you put me on the spot and I just got really nervous, so not happening. <laughs> okay. Um you can find both Lady Leah and I at tmbdos.podbean.com. That's They Must Be Destroyed on Site, our podcast, and um, all of our requisite links are there. Although, uh, Lady Lee, tell people where they can find you on Instagram. At Money Tiny All Star. Mm-hmm. Yep, all of the updates. Yes. Nice, nice. Cameron. Oh, well, I'm still kicking it. The Sin of a Degeneration. You can find us everywhere. You can get podcasts, you know, Spotify, uh, Stitcher, iTunes, you name it, you can find us there. Um, winding down our Vincent Price Appreciation Month and dropping the final episode uh, the day after this is being recorded. So tomorrow, I'll be on the 30th, I'll be dropping that one and going back to my usual line of full moon shows, grindhouse exploitation horror, things like that, and dropping a couple of new sequel to Deja Vu episodes. Nice. Yeah, this show and all, all the shows that I do, Last Call of Torchies, Two Dream Room Commentaries, um, Burning for Springwood, and there's one more I'm forgetting. Oh, that was on the Legion Patreon. You can listen to Blood from the Core. That's on there. All the others you can find directly on the Cinnabee Podcast feed. Uh, subscribe. You will get all those in, in your inbox as they come in your, your chosen podcatcher. And um, and wherever you can find, find podcasts, because Bo spread this out pretty good. Um. Next show you should be hearing, uh, again, m- more dead people. I'm not sure which one we're doing next, but there's a Sydney Poitier show. We're doing the Defiant Ones with uh, Black Mama, White Mama uh, together. Mm-hmm. Those those go together, and we're doing um, a tribute to Peter Bogdanovich, which is Suzanne's oh, yeah. pro- Suzanne's programming with the last picture show. And um, what is the other one? Targets. There you go. Oh, okay. Horace, nice. Horace Karloff's one of his last uh, things he ever did, and um, that is your entire month of March, right there. April is the anniversary month. I'll, I'll reveal that in the in the Facebook group. It might involve some of these people. Well, we'll see if they want to do something. Um, it's going to involve many podcasters. So scheduling the thing I hate the most. I'm gonna I'm gonna get into the bane of existence of you know recording one segment at a time for this. So. Looking forward to it and not looking forward to it at the same time. <laughs> but um, this is the end. This is the end, my friends. This has been your Cinebeef Podcast, where if you've got beef, we've got the grinder. See you next time.